Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Hope you guys are having a wonderful time. So today I wanted to go ahead and go into a little bit more of like a deep dive into kind of how I would gear my character. So the first video, if you guys watch the Righteous Fire 3.24 Chieftain League starter, that's more of like a, I guess like an introduction to show everything. Today it's more of like a deep dive for people who want to know more about how I kind of prioritize my affixes. Normally I would make this video like day one into the league or day two, but sometimes I'm too far ahead already for some people. So I figure making this now while I have my thoughts compiled uh, might be a little bit better or cleaner, right? So let's get started. Um, this is gonna kind of pick up a little bit past the campaign. Um, primary reason is because I already have a campaign video, so I don't really have to make one about how I prioritize things in the campaign. So we're gonna just jump right on into essentially the gearing. So this over here is showing level 81 to 93. So at 81 to 93, let's say on the 81 side, you're in yellow maps. On the 93 side, you're farming red maps, right? So going ahead and looking at our character right now, let's start with the weapon. So a weapon in uh, for this build, one of the main things we're looking for is damage over time multiplier. Now this comes in two different forms on a scepter. It can either be damage over time multiplier or fire damage over time multiplier. Very rarely do you ever find these stats in combination. It can happen. The next thing I would look for is plus two level of all fire spell skills or um, plus level of all spell skills, which is four times rare. The problem is because the plus one level does not scale your uh, righteous fire, it only scales the fire trap, more beneficial to aim for dot multi. Now, the reason I bring this up is because in the past we would stack a load of plus gems and you still want to do that but at the beginning, you'd rather scale two skills rather than one, right? We're also at the point where we don't have enough dot multi to hit heavy diminishing returns, but this brings me over to increases. So increases are littered all over the passive tree. If I come over here and I just type in increase, like half the damn tree highlights. So increases are all over the place. But if I remove that and type in multi, you'll see a lot less things highlight. In particular here, we have arsonist, which is fire damage over time multiplier, holy fire, acrimony, and breath of flames. That's really it. Outside of that, you're turning to your gear, jewels, etc. So this is why it's not that I avoid increased damage on my scepters, it's that I have a different priority. Now do note that when it comes to crafting on a scepter, so when I'm talking about crafting, I quite literally mean um, crafting right over here. So this would be at your bench. You can do fire damage and ignite chance. There we go fire damage and ignite chance this is going to be your strongest prefix um i know i just talked about not using increase but if you don't have a prefix oftentimes crafting this is better so this is good because it comes from betrayal number one but it gives an increase with ignite chance which we want for the build number two would be fire damage over time multiplier now note you can't craft fire damage over time multiplier on a scepter that has it but you can craft fire damage over time multiplier on a scepter that has damage over time multiplier so this is a nice way to do it another alternative one is grabbing a damage over time multiplier scepter that's fractured which will probably be expensive and you can find this on my website so i won't talk too much about it and then you basically spam minion essences for fear uh, to get a high increase and then you craft another multi Let's talk about shield now. So shields, the number one thing I'm going to buy is a Rise of the Phoenix. The primary reason for this is as a chieftain, Rise of the Phoenix gives us five max all res and gives us at the bare minimum 100 life regen per second, which then gets scaled off of all of our increases, such as increased life recovery. So Rise of the Phoenix, super fantastic shield, usually not too expensive. Another alternative is using a Dawnbreaker. I don't like Dawnbreaker as much because the recovery that I get from Rise of the Phoenix and the Elemental Mitigation for me are quite a bit better. Later on in the league, when I have more currency or in Rise of the Phoenix turns into like a one, two or three Chaos Unique, I will buy a couple of them and vol them to try to get physical damage taken as either A, Fire or B, uh, Cold. I try to avoid Lightning because if you're not Shock Immune and you're converting physical to Lightning, then you're actually applying miniature self-shocks. Cold doesn't matter too much because I will be freeze immune. Later on, when I get my Annihilations approach, we're not going to talk about those because that's much higher into the gearing. You're even immune to chill. So as long as it's not lightning, I'm pretty much fine. If you opt out for like a full avoid shock or reduced effective shock setup, then lightning's totally fine. Helmet, uh, in this instance, I basically have a really poo-poo helm. The way I would go about crafting a helmet is A, first off, you're buying an item level 82 plus Elder Helm. Pure armor bases would be better 
Armor ES Hybrid is okay. Same thing with Evasion. Uh, and I'm either going to A, Reforge Fire with Harvest. Reforge Fire with Harvest will make it so that burning damage will pop up more likely. And then there's a chance that it pulls Concentrated Effect. That is effectively a six link helmet because you've got four sockets on your helmet. And then you also gain the Conk Effect and burning damage. Although another option, if you have a lot of currency, is just buying Essence of Horror, slamming it on your helmet until you get Conk Effect or Burning Damage, and then you throw your Fire Trap in there. Now, speaking of which, I always put my Righteous Fire in my body armor right away. Now, this is currently using a Glorious Plate as an example of armor, but if you want an easier time gearing, simply getting an Armor ES base would work better, just because it's much easier to color. In this current state, it is more annoying to specifically color body armors like this. I will also be pivoting over to a Cloak of Flame whenever I'm able to acquire one. Cloak of Flame is going to be huge. It's going to be key for scaling damage a little bit later. One more thing to talk about with the helmet and the body armor is the following. You are actually able to craft physical damage taken as fire and lightning as a prefix and physical damage taken as fire on your helmet. In fact, I actually need to redo this body armor in the POB because it would be better to, to have the physical damage taken as fire and lightning over that armor roll. So after this video, I've got a little bit of work to do. Uh, Titan Gauntlets. Gloves are one of my favorite things for Righteous Fire builds because it's the one piece I never have a unique piece. So Righteous Fire gloves to me, when someone says RF gloves, my head says like 17 to 18% increased life regeneration, bare minimum. And then suffixes are usually like chaos res and uh, dexterity or another resistance. So that's pretty much what I always look for. Searing Exarch implicits are pretty big for this. So we want elemental proliferation. I think it's specifically called ignite proliferation on these gloves. This elevates your clear to like the next level. You can get it as early as your first ember or it might take you 150. It's all RNG. Other ways to acquire great clear is getting a cluster jewel. A specifically a medium cluster jewel with fan the flames this will mimic exactly what this does it's up to you which version you want to use or another option is getting a unique ring called barracks respite now barracks respite will make it so your ignite kind of chains in a line you'll most likely see me using this and the reason i say that is because i can buy this off trade it's unlikely that i have like enough currency to buy the embers because it's kind of rng day one in the league and the Cluster Jewel would require a Cluster Jewel setup, which I may or may not have. So Barracks Respite and the Cluster Jewel is typically the way I'll go. And then when I'm ready to craft proper gloves for my build, that's when I'll go ahead and get the uh, Ellie Prolif here instead. Now, boots are pretty simple. Pretty much just looking for a life res, increased life regeneration rate. When I say res, I'm particularly aiming for Chaos Res. I like being Chaos Resistance capped on my Chieftains, or in general, just makes the build feel a lot better. Here you'll see it's not Chaos Res capped. It's because I want to keep the gear ethical for you guys. Um, there's a beautiful craft called Fire and Chaos Resistance, also that comes from Betrayal. The reason I like to talk about this mod is with Chieftains Ascendancy here, the Sallow Cleansing Water, when I actually remove this, Go ahead and look at what happens to my resistance. This means that you can effectively stack fire res to keep your res capped, so making that fire and chaos res even more valuable. Now, instead of it giving you 14 fire res, 14 chaos res, it also gives you uh, uh, six cold res and six lightning res, bringing even more value to basically that suffix, right? I already covered the rings. Um, well, I got not necessarily, but. One of the rings, for example, was Barracks Respite I was talking about. In general, I like Amethyst rings to help prioritize that Chaos Res cap. This is a good place to get minimum Frenzy from Betrayal for more damage. Leo, you can craft increased damage with rings on a prefix. That's not really priority. Um, but usually, like I said, I just pretty much aim for Chaos Resistance here. Now on the Amulet, Amulet kind of goes into the same scenario as the weapon. You can also get plus one gems here, but I would rather scale my RF and my fire and my fire trap at the same time than tunnel vision on one. However, there are some instances like maybe you find a, a really good deal or just get lucky and you get plus one fire gems with chaos resistance, dexterity with a life roll, right? That's crazy. You, you'll use something like that. Uh, in the end, your goal is to get both. However, the super, super end, you're going to aim for a defiance of destiny. This is something that literally makes you almost immortal when you're mapping. If you've ever played RF uh, Inquisitor with Aegis Melding, this is pretty much comparable to that, except you don't need block chance. It happens every single hit. So really cool, very expensive, I, I imagine. So I'm not going to really be aiming for it.
Now, Immortal Flesh is a fantastic budget belt for its price. Um, the reason why is the life regen you get from it is kind of unrivaled. If I were to remove this, you can actually see how much regeneration I lose on this belt. It's actually, it's quite impressive. So Immortal Flesh is a fantastic option. Um, gives a lot of flat life as well, which is nice. And you even get increased armor while you're not ignited, frozen, or shocked. So that's another nice benefit of this. Now, as for your flasks, uh, I'm currently running Quartz, Granite, Quicksilver, Silver, and a Life Flask. You want to run a Ruby Flask up until you're about 90 max all res or 90 max fire, which makes all of your resistance equal. Once you have that, you don't really need it, so it's kind of up to you. Uh, I'm kind of favoring dropping it for a either A, a Silver Flask, or B, a Sulfur. I'll probably run a Sulfur Flask on this character, to be fair. Um, so I might change this, but I'm not sure. And then pretty much when you're at this point and you're at your 2020 gems, the next thing to do is really pretty much pivot into jewels. So you can see here, I've got like fire damage over time multiplier increase in life. I try to get at least one multi on my jewel. So that would be damage over time multi or fire damage over, multi, uh, over time multiplier. Life for me is mandatory. So I always have life and I try to get multi. If not, I go for a double increase. So something like increased fire damage and area damage. Over here in the notes, I actually explained um, right over here on different suffixes you can get if you can't get your multi. Now, if you guys remember me talking about determination and dropping determination for malevolence, I don't remember if I actually said that in this, one of the big things you wanna do later actually is pivot into malevolence. So I drop determination in favor of malevolence, and the way I do that is by getting about 60% physical damage taken as X element. This is where uh, the Cloak of Flame really kicks in, Wearing a Cloak of Flame immediately gets you 40% of physical damage taken as fire. From there, I went ahead and listed some other ways you can acquire it. Taste of Hate being one of the easiest if you can afford it. You just slap it on and you get 15%. Corrupted Rise of the Phoenix over here gives 6 to 8. Crafted Rare on the Helmet, that's 8%. Watcher's Eye is probably pretty expensive, 8 to 12% um, from Purity of Fire. Armor ES Mastery, if you're capped Chaos Res, you can get 20%, or sorry, 10% here. Dawnbreaker is 10 to 20% physical as fire. Do note again that this is chaos, so you want to make sure you are chaos resistance capped specifically for this one. I'm actually going to, we're going to put a line for that too. And then body armor, if you are not using a cloak of flame, this is another option to get 12%. Other than that, that pretty much covers everything I would kind of do there. Um, I, I think that actually covers most of the stuff here. Um, if I had to go over my links a little bit, I always stick my RF and my body armor as my first six link because I focus more on clear speed. Remember, getting a level of Righteous Fire is not as important. When I'm in my early lab, I'll probably go for Transfigured Gems. If I'm not going for Transfigured Gems for currency, I'm gonna bump up the quality because this increases the base radius. TLDR, it gives you bigger circle, which is good. Uh, Fire Trap is always gonna be on a four link until I can pivot it to the Elder Helm. That's the one where we want Conch Effect and or Burning and or 30% more Ellie. So a combination of two of those three. That way, if you ever hit Conk Effect, you don't have to worry about the RF shrinking. It's hitting the Fire Trap. Purity of Fire at level 20 is very big because it gets a 4% maximum uh, Fire Res. If it's below 4, it doesn't... Or sorry, if it's below level 20, it doesn't get that. One nice thing about Purity of Fire is when you're over here on the Aura Effect, if you take the 10% increased effect of Auras along with grabbing Sovereignty and taking this Aura Effect wheel, the 4% rounds up to 5 if you go ahead and look over here, oh, actually, am I overcapped on res? Hmm. Usually that 4% actually uh, overcaps you. Let me go ahead and unequip my shield here. Maybe it's, uh, okay, yeah, 86. So if I un unallocate this node here, you can see it actually go to 85. So that is like one nice way to acquire it. Another thing about this is that when you are able to get a level 23 purity of fire, if you go ahead and look here, it says 4% additional maximum res. If I plus that, it actually goes to 5%. So that's another bonus max res we get there. Very, very nice. Uh, summon Skitterbot. Of course, we go Skitterbot after we drop Purity of Elements. So once we are able to uh, use Purity of Fire in our Uber Lab, I like to remove the Purity of Elements in favor of Skitterbot uh, alongside Purity of Fire. Whenever you do this, you will be vulnerable to freezes. So you want to make sure you have a Divine Vessel and use it on the Brine King Pantheon so that you are permanently freeze immune. This also applies to all of your future characters in the League. So very nice. And then this is the term I was talking about. It's about 50, 60%. I guess I'll update this to 60 while I'm at it. At 60% physical damage taken as ele elemental, I like to switch to malevolence. Note, it does say elemental, and one of the things here is chaos. So I'm just going to leave it at that. But the physical damage taken as chaos is still totally fine as long as you are chaos res capped. Uh, other than that, 
Everything else is pretty much solid. Um, I, I don't think there's really much else I could do. The next thing to really do is talk about like the non-adorn, but I could just sit here and yap about RF for like eight years. So I think we're not going to go into that and I'll leave this for my uh, future video. So one other thing I will say on gloves though, or not gloves on ring is instead of using like regular rings that you would normally run, you have two extra things you could do. Number one, because when we drop purity of elements, we are not immune to shock anymore. You can pivot into using a suffix for reduced effective shock like you see on this amethyst ring. Also, if you need additional sustain with your build, there is nothing wrong with grabbing a Kikizuru ring. It's actually very solid. All attributes can help with dex and intelligence requirements. 60% reduced effective curse overall is very nice since I focus more on mapping and I run every curse that like basically applies on our maps. The three life regeneration per second scales with your character level. So by the time you're level 90, it's giving you 270 flat life regen, which is actually a very strong amount coming from a ring. So I'm actually a big fan of this. If these are very cheap, which they usually are, there's a good chance you can buy out a bunch of them and corrupt them. There are really sick corruptions, like unaffected by bleed, unaffected by poison. There are some fantastic corruptions you can get on rings, and these are literally like one chaos. So that pretty much covers everything I could probably do. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry if I rambled a little bit on too much. Um, if the video did help you, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, I'll be league starting this build tomorrow. So if you guys have any questions or you're stuck, tune into the live stream. Feel free to ask away. That's pretty much about it, so I'll catch you guys all later. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. See you guys all tomorrow.